Welcome back to the channel, Crypto Trend Trader, and today we're going to be taking a look at CCJ, Chemical Corporation, one of the leading players in the uranium space. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you this is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile, so please do your own research and trade responsibly. All right, so here we are on the Chemical CCJ chart. Uh, so we do have history on Chemical going back to roughly 1996 until present. Uh, we know the initial lowest low it has ever put in was in 2000. It then went on an epic bull run all the way up until 2007, uh, which took it up from $1.74 up to about $56, uh, roughly about a 25x. So very, very big move here. 3,100%, uh, 3,130%. After we topped out in 2007, uh, we did put in a low. And then lower high, confirming that we were going to go much lower. We then put in a lower low, another lower high. And then finally, we bottomed out in 2020 in March. So that being said, let's throw on some basic drawing tools and see what we've got here. So we're going to start with the Fibonacci from the all-time low to the all-time high. And we're just going to go ahead and pull that out all the way to the right here. Turn that one green. And then all, all we're looking for is once we top out right here, which in hindsight, obviously we know took place, we're looking for an initial touch of the 236. So once we come down to the 236, that confirms that the top is in at least temporarily. And then we look for the 382 as our next FIB support level. So it did not take long, melted down to the 382, basically didn't close below it. So we know that was a pretty strong support, give or take a couple of these wicks. We bounced back up here. And then most importantly, we did put in a lower high and then continued to the downside. We eventually broke down on the monthly below the 200 exponential and simple moving average, uh, at which point in time we visited the 0.5, consolidated around that level, and then we did get a wick down here to the 618, which then resulted in the macro low. So now what we want to do is we want to take a fib from the top right here and take that down to the bottom. We're going to turn that one yellow. That will be an internal fib retracement. And the importance of that being from this move here to the top to the move to the bottom how much of that move have we recuperated uh, so a typical recoup is at least 50 percent oftentimes you'll see a 618 in this case we came almost up to the 786 so the most important thing to pay attention to right here is is that we have a high we have a low we have a lower high then we have another lower low down here and then technically still have another lower high so this has and is still technically on a monthly time frame, on any time frame, in a downtrend. Now, if we see the actual downtrend line from the top right here and then our next peak, we actually got above it and we're consolidating above it for now. We're also above the 200 simple moving average, although it is flipping pink. We're above the 200 exponential moving average, has been red for a long time, and now it has flipped back blue. So we're sort of getting some mixed signals here. The most important thing, though, is that as long as we are at a lower high than the previous high, we're still confirmed in the downtrend. And theoretically, we're going to then expect lower lows. Now, that is not always the case. We could be consolidating here before we come up and test this level. But for us, the absolute line in the sand on CCJ, where if we break above it, it's going to look like it's going to new all-time highs, is going to be up here at $42.68. Uh, so that is what we'll be paying attention to. So that is a strong, strong resistance level up here. Everyone will be watching that level uh, for a confirmed break. And then obviously, if we break down to the downside to a new low, that would be very clear that we're still in a downtrend and obviously at a new low. So let's look at our momentum indicators and see what we have going on. So if we just turn off our drawing tools for a moment and we just take a look at our actual indicator oscillators, we can see essentially what we're looking for is when we're in a nice strong uptrend, we see all green histograms. When we start to top out, we see the green flip to red. Does not mean that we don't go higher after that. Here we top out on the indicator oscillator and then we actually put in a lower high here, which corresponds with a higher high uh, for the macro high. And that is very clearly bearish divergence. So we printed bearish divergence and that was the macro top. So what are we looking for? Potentially more bearish divergence to signal that we are at a macro top or something similar. So here, if we look at the indicator oscillator on the monthly, we see a bunch of green histograms, couple reds, couple greens, couple reds, couple greens, and back to reds. We see now we're starting to show more reds than greens. So we are showing some short-term signs of exhaustion. We were in the bullish control zone. We got a hard sell signal and left the bullish control zone on the jewel thief. 
Uh, that tells us again that we are running out of steam here. As long as we're consolidating above the 200 simple moving average, it doesn't look bad. If we lose this level, though, we likely come back down and retest the 200 exponential. So around $16 seems like a likely target if we lose this level. And to tell you the truth, the momentum indicator oscillators and current price action tells us likely that will happen. If we zoom in here a little closer, uh, we can see basically our peak right here is the same for these two candles. And again, we see a lower high on the indicator oscillator, a lower high on the indicator oscillator, indicating once more that we do have multiple drives of bearish divergence. Here we put in a higher high um, with a higher high on the histogram. But here, when we put in that higher high, we have a lower high on the stochastics. And then here we have basically the same high and we see a lower high on the histogram and the stochastics. So again, we see either two or three drives of bearish divergence typically will lead to a breakdown from key support to our next level. So we can also pull our fibs back up and see where that would be. The 0.5 comes in at about 1750. The 200 moving average comes in around like $16. And then we see the green 382 slightly lower at about 15 bucks. So somewhere around like 15 to 1730 seems likely. So what if we go down to a shorter time frame and take a look at what that's telling us? We'll go ahead and turn off our drawing tools and just take a look at momentum. So it's no secret that obviously I was very bearish in 2008 when we see the flip below the 200 exponential and simple and we flip from our blue moving averages to our red and pink moving averages respectively. And then of course I got very, very bullish on uranium in general uh, right around this level. So all we're looking for, nothing too fancy here, is when the transition takes place. When we flip into a bull market the same way as we did back here when we essentially flip into the bear market. So the only real thing we're looking for is essentially where's the momentum. If the momentum is to the downside, we don't want to be involved in this asset. If the momentum is to the upside, of course, we want to be participating in the run. So now here we are still bullish on the asset longer terms. When we look at this on the weekly, again, we see a similar type of signature, a couple of peaks, red slope line, and we are obviously trending, uh, you know, sideways, but the indicator oscillators are trending down. So if we maintain this level for long enough, the indicator oscillators will have worked out their exhaustion and then we can take another leg higher. But more likely than not, if we lose this support because we have tested it just too many times, we're likely to come down here again to the 200 exponential, 200 simple, or one of these key fibs. Uh, target again looking like about that 1750 level. Now, if we zoom in here and pay closer attention to what's taking place on shorter time frames, we're going to go one more time frame in here and we're going to look at the daily. Again, we see the daily flip bullish right around here and has stayed bullish all the way up to the top. So we got bullish on CCJ at about $9. Here we are at 21 consolidating, trying to hold on to support. And now we see what's taking place is we're starting to flash the red on the 200 exponentials and simples, starting to get tired up here at this level. And we're now consolidating below the moving averages. So at this point in time, the 200 exponential has already flipped red. The 200 simple is close to flipping red. It's basically flat. So very, very soon we're about to confirm into the bear market. Now here we confirmed into a bear market and then we were able to push back up, but we did put in a lower high. So we have a high, we have a low, then we have a lower high. So now the next thing we would expect is a lower low. So a breakdown below $20 would take out that previous low and confirm that we are in fact going into a bear market or a downtrend. And that would also correspond with the 200 exponential and simple moving averages flipping red and also confirming uh, we are in fact in a bear market or bear trend. So that being said, we see red slope on the TD MACD. Uh, the histograms are green and back above the slope line right around the zero line. So there is potential for them to build momentum back to the upside. Uh, but the current price action does not look particularly good. We see on the jewel thief as well. Uh, we see the knife has a very, very powerful stab to the downside. Typically, those stabs to the downside will result in at least some kind of temporary bottom. Here we see we got one and a nice reflex rally. Here we see we got one on that gap down. Nice reflex rally to close the gap. Here was a little one, not really, you know, standing on the same legs as these ones. And now here we see a pretty aggressive one as well. And we are coming down to previous lows as well as we have that descending support line, etc. Uh, so we could expect to see at least some temporary support around this level. Uh, but everything is actually pointing short to medium term to the downside. Uh, so that being said, right now, I am still very, very bullish on CCJ long term, but it does look like we have some further downside potential. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see exactly where that downside potential might be in the short to medium term. 
So we're going to do one more fib. This one we're going to take from the low down here in 2020, the Rona low. And then we're just going to take that all the way up to our current high uh, for this little cycle here. We'll go ahead and flip that one to uh, turn that one blue. And then we're just going to take a closer look. So we know obviously once we peak, what we're looking for is a touch of the 236 to confirm short term that the high is in. Obviously confirmation with the lower high as well. So that's exactly what we're looking for. Confluence between our different methods of determining short and medium term highs. So that being said, if we break down from this key support and the 236, the next target based on that Fibonacci would be the 382. Again, coming in about 1625. So we are really seeing a cluster of support around this level. Now, if we break down to that level, that does not need to be the macro low, but it seems like a high likelihood that we would come down and visit this level. So in the meantime, we're going to put it in between the 382 and our macro Fibonacci. We'll go ahead and turn that one green. And that is going to be our next target to the downside. And that is right there around like that 1630 to 1730 level. So about a dollar range there. And that would be another from just where we're at right now. That'll be about another 25% drop. So obviously enough that it's worth getting out of the way for that and then rebuying at a lower price. Now, if we do break down to the 382, nothing's going to go straight down. We would expect it to hit the 382 level, bounce around here, put in another in a series of lower highs before going lower down here to potentially visit the 0.5 level, which is about 13 bucks. So it does sound like I'm obviously very bearish on this, but I'm not short to medium term. It does look like we have some downside potential for consolidation, etc. But long term, there's some opportunity as well. So we're going to flip back over to our weekly chart here. And what we want to do is go ahead and project out potential targets to the upside. So the way we do that is by taking our FIB from the peak right here to the trough right there. And then looking, hey, if that was the bottom right there and we continue and break out to the upside, what would be some potential targets? So obviously we already have that in place with our yellow Fibonacci. So we're going to turn off the auto function right here and then just click and drag. And that will allow us to move the actual chart here. And then we can look at some of our potential targets. So you'll see they're still in yellow. So they correspond with the peak to trough level. Let's say we do take out this previous high right here and start continuing to the upside. This allows us to project future targets for CCJ. So the most typical and initial target would be the 1.236. So that is at $97.77. So from where we're at right now, say I'm wrong and we don't go any lower. And then next thing you know, we're at new all-time highs and shooting up to the upside. We're talking about a 341% potential move now the difference being if we just bought now and then took advantage of that 344 percent versus buying at the 382 which is our green box we put in here and then that same move playing out it's the difference between 344 percent or 497 percent so in many ways the exit is important but the entry is really how you make your true gains so we don't want to try to bottom feed and pick the absolute bottom, but we also don't want to just buy and then take the losses on the way because that takes away not only it causes a bunch of stress and puts us underwater in a position and is misallocation of capital in the time being, especially if we're expecting a pullback. But that being said, it also really messes with the overall yield that you have because you have that much worse of an entry price. So that's very important to pay attention to. Now, without getting too crazy, without getting too carried away, we know that the most common areas, the initial target is 1.236, and that's great. And obviously, you know, massive gains between 350 and 500% if we were to get to those levels. But the real targets are the 1.5 or my macro target, the 1.618. So what we're going to do is go ahead and put another box in here between the 1.5 and the 1.618. And that gives us a macro target up here of like roughly... 183 to $238. So again, it seems like I'm bearish in the short term based on what we're looking at. But even if you were to buy right now, stomach the losses if we do continue down lower and just hold your position. And then we do get back to the 1.236. We're talking about 341%. If we make it up to the 1.5 and new all-time highs, we're talking about $179 or 718%. And then finally, if we look at the 1.618, that is $241 and 1,000% from where we're at right now. So basically, you know, a massive, massive gain. So that being said, what if we look at this as a risk reward spectrum? So we're going to go over here and we're going to take our long tool right here and we're going to drag it down to the potential entry, which is exactly where we're at right now. And we're going to say, okay, where would our stop loss be? Well, if we break down below that 382 or break down below the 0.5, it could really start looking bad. So let's just put it down here at the 0.5 
a, a big stop loss, obviously 40% is more than you're normally going to risk on a trade, but that can be made up for by position sizing. So if we have a trade set up and we're going to take a 10% stop loss on it on a hundred dollar trade, that would be $10 we're willing to risk. In this case, if you still wanted to risk the $10, but you need to have a 40% stop loss so you don't get taken out of what could be a very rewarding trade. If we do see a drawdown, you can basically just take your $100 position and then say, okay, if I'm only willing to risk 10 of that $100 position, maybe I need to change the position sizing. So if we take that $10 and make that our stop loss, we're just going to take 10, which is how much we're willing to risk. We're going to divide that by 0.4 and that's going to give us $25. So we're going to make our position instead of $100, a $25 position. So it will be smaller, but the stop loss will still be in line with the $10. And then obviously the reward will be smaller as well, but it will correspond with the risk reward that we set up for this trade. So obviously if we have that 40% massive stop loss and then our target is the 1.236, that gives us 40% downside, which seems like a lot, but it gives us 338% upside. So it gives us an 8.2 to 1 risk reward ratio. So obviously buying into this right now with an 8 to 1 risk reward ratio basically says, hey, if we're right, we're going to make eight times what we bet. But if we're wrong, we're going to lose our stop loss right here. So the risk that we're putting up is a 40% loss, but the gain we have potentially is a 338% gain. So we have a substantially better scenario. If we flip a coin and we lose $1, if we're wrong, and we flip that same coin, we would make $3.38 if we were right, essentially. Now, what about the difference? What if we actually wait patiently? Or what if we take a partial entry where we're at now, and then we enter again at our target down here at the 0.5? So then maybe we keep that same stop loss level uh, below the 3.82 on the uh, yellow fib. We take our entry right here at 17. That would put our stop loss at roughly $13. That's 23% now. And then that same target to the upside, the 1.236 at roughly $97, now is 465%. So now we have a 23% stop loss. We have a 465% target, and that gives us a 19.62 risk reward ratio. So we're basically betting on a coin toss, 50-50 chance we're right, essentially. And if we are right, we get $20. But if we're wrong, we lose $1. So the risk reward ratio is absolutely phenomenal for this potential setup assuming that one day we do go to all-time highs and those all-time highs take us up to roughly the 1.236 level. And then finally, we're just going to do one more final trade setup. And again, we'll just assume that we do get down here uh, to that 0.5 or to the 3.82 uh, roughly area there. We'll leave that same stop loss. And then we're just going to drag this up here and take a look at our potential target, the 1.5 to 1.618. Um, so we're looking at roughly 974% upside to... 1,300% upside and the downside risk on this trade would be 23%. So obviously risk reward ratio is absolutely phenomenal. Does the trade setup have to play out? Do we ever get up to those levels? Do we just drop down through here and put in new all-time lows? Uh, any of those things are possible. The entire trade setup and everything we've looked at today is essentially predicated on you know one basic principle. And that is that no matter how deep of a retrace we have right here, we're not going to flip the 200 exponential and simple on the weekly bearish which means they will stay blue, which means they will at least temporarily act as support before we go higher. So that's what we're looking for. That's the key. And that's everything that is going to tell us going into the future if CCJ is a good investment. The most important thing on the monthly, we have reclaimed the 200 exponential. We have reclaimed the 200 simple. Even if we do break down and oscillate between those two for some time, as long as we're hanging out around this level and we're dragging the 200 exponential up and we're not putting too much pressure on the 200 simple, eventually the probability that we could go up from here is just as good as the probability of us going down from here. The only thing that really pushes the longer time frames more bearish is the fact that we are putting in a series of lower highs and lower lows. So we know that the second we take out $41.73, if and when we get a double from where we're at right now and we take out that level, we will no longer have a lower high. So if we have a high, a low, a lower high, a lower low, and then this high comes up here eventually and takes out that, we will no longer have a third lower high. And that essentially, we're just a couple dollars off of the previous all-time high. And then we can really start looking at the 1.236, 1.5, or 1.618 Fibonacci extension. So that is it for CCJ Chemico Corporation video. Uh, one of the uh, lead uranium stocks worth paying attention to, uh, not only by market cap, but also by time in existence. 
Uh, so that being said, we do have to look out for the short-term bear market potential, the series of lower highs and lower lows, not only on the macro monthly, but also on the daily. If we do get the breakdown, we have some key targets in mind. We're going to be really paying attention to that green box right around $17 roughly. And then if we do get another leg down from there, we'll be looking at something around $13 as well. So we have some targets to the downside. We have some targets to the upside, some potential scenarios playing out what to look out for and invalidation levels as well. Uh, we have some potential trade setups for some serious gains in the uranium space if and when nuclear power uh, should get out from beneath this dark cloud of uh, you know negative connotations that are essentially unjustified. Uh, so that's it for today. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, I'm always open to requests if you have a specific asset or asset class you would like to see. Uh, this is our long-term technical analysis for CCJ, Cameco Corp, and uh, overall broader uranium space in general. Uh, that's it for today. Remember, this is not financial advice. I'm not your financial advisor. These markets are extremely volatile. Please do your own research and trade responsibly. That's it. Crypto Trend Trader, and I'm out of here.